Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta in Bengaluru on Air Force Day. And if I am standing here in the premises of Aeronautical Development Agency, I think you can be sure I am in good company. To my left is a model of Tejas, the aircraft all of India feels proud of and which has been developed by this agency. And to my right, two of the gentlemen who have led teams which have made it possible. Mr. C.D. Balaji. Hi. Director, uh, Director ADA, Director ADA, uh, and the program charge, director of the combat aircraft. Yes, in, in charge, charge not just of Tejas but many others, and a lot of the things going being planned for the future, That's right. including AMCA and some things you can talk about, some things you cannot. And uh, Dr. Girish Devadhare, a scientist, scientist. Uh, he's a soldier scientist. You are a or sailor scientist. You are a scientist, scientist who's dedicated his life uh, to many technologies, some we can talk about, some we cannot, but just describe them a little bit, describe your role. Uh, you are, I am uh, looking after the flight control systems of Tejas, primarily as a, a technologist and also an associate program director looking after new programs in Aeronautical Development Agency. So as part of my major activities, we have developed the flight control system for the Tejas. What we used to call fly-by-wire. It is called fly-by-wire. And as everyone is aware, Tejas is a highly unstable aircraft uh, for maneuverability. Controlling this aircraft is a major challenge, and that is what the fly-by-wire control system does. And See, this, this is very strange. You know, you, normally you would say for a conventional mind that a really stable aircraft is a beautiful aircraft. But now you take great pride in saying it's a highly unstable aircraft. Yes, but the challenge here is for the pilot, it still is a beautiful, stable aircraft. And this is what the computer is doing. It is making the pilot, for the pilot, it's a very good aircraft to fly, but it's very maneuverable and the computer is making this possible. So why do we make the aircraft more unstable instead of making it more stable? No, it's so that you get better please, agility. Please, please do remember that most of the viewers don't know any of the technical stuff which you take for granted. No, that's the reason I'm saying that, you know, the aircraft is highly agile, it's highly maneuverable, and that's the beauty of this whole thing, that, you know, by making it unstable, you're giving a pilot a pseudo sense of stability by his uh, controls, as Dr. Girish brought out. However, what really happens is that uh, you can throw the aircraft around. And by this agility, like, for example, if you have to move the aircraft to a full 8G maneuver or you want to do a very tight it is turn. eight times the force of force, gravity. Force of gravity. And you want to basically do a very, very tight turn or so. Then what really happens is that uh, you can actually throw it around not worry, the pilot should not worry about whether he's going to lose control or not. Right. Because once he moves it to the extremes, the com computer actually takes on so and then builds up this thing. Can you describe this model to me? W what are all these things? But once again, remember that uh, not everybody is an Air Force or an aviation buff. Okay, this uh, model here is basically of a two-seater aircraft. In fact, uh, trainer. Which, uh, the trainer, which the, uh, our uh, chief of air staff, uh, H.E. Marshal Raha, flew in the month of May. You have a, a single seat in the front and a, a second uh, tandem seat at the rear. Basically, this has something called eight uh, weapon stations or store stations right. as would be I can count them four on either side. One, two, three on one side, right. three on the other side. Right. There will be a center line station where you can carry an external drop tank or so. And this one is a dedicated station called a, a laser site, site, which you can designate targets. Which can light up a target. Light up a target and then illuminate that particular target through a laser. And then you can, a laser guided bomb from one side, you can actually put to that particular target. And this is something that we have demonstrated this capability on this aircraft already. So that uh, successfully we have been able and to And I believe recently it. you uh, put some extra load on it also to yeah. demonstrate so, it. So th th that's the beauty. There is something called a tandem pylon, which means that conventionally you put, uh, say, one bomb on this station instead of one drop tank. What we have done there is using this same pylon, a longer pylon, 1,000 pound bomb in the front, 1,000 pound bomb in the rear. Like that we went and uh, we've recently done these drops at uh, of Jaisalmer. Jaisalmer. All 4,000 pounds. All 4,000 pounders. And done effectively. Done effectively in the, within the targeted area, mm. within Chandran range that we did. I believe uh, you put some uh, higher level of controls, I mean, pardon me for using very lay language, uh, in the new versions of Tejas, whereby they can uh, change their configuration from uh, attack to air defense. Yes, actually uh, Tejas is very advanced in that sense that when you carry all these weapons, 
the computer knows what you are carrying and if you release some weapon, internally the reconfiguration takes place. The pilot doesn't have to change the way he's flying the aircraft, regardless of what he's carrying. And we are also doing one more thing, we are trying to take this aircraft to its maximum possible capability. And that also the controller is doing by building in limiters, so that the pilot can fly to the max possible uh, capability of the aircraft without exceeding it and going into unsafe regions. That, that the computer will stop him from doing. Yes, that's carefree maneuvering. Is so, what. so does computer sort of override the pilot? Does computer make pilot less important? Not less important. He is assisting the pilot by making sure he doesn't go into areas which are unsafe. For a conventional aircraft, pilot has to remember this and then he will stay slightly short of these areas because he is worried he may exceed and get into regions which he won't be able to control. So the computer allows you to take you to the extremes without any worry of departures. So it's complete carefree maneuvering. Mr. Balaji, can you explain to me, uh, since you were in naval aviation for a long time and, and naval engineer as well, how exactly, uh, what exactly do we mean by an aircraft changing configuration from an attack mode, bomber mode to an uh, air defense mode? See, what happens is this aircraft is uh, something called a multi-role uh, aircraft. It's got a swing roll capability. Uh, what which happens is different from swing which, wing. Swing wing, yeah, different from swing wing. Here what happens is on the inboard side, we are going to be carrying uh, the air to ground weapons. Like, some, like I mentioned that we can carry 1,000 pound bombs on the center line, I mean inboard station. On the center line station, we'll be carrying a beyond visual range air to air missile. And on the outboard station, we are carrying close combat uh, uh, air to air missiles. Typically what happens is that uh, when you are in an air to ground configuration, that is a heavy store configuration, your boundaries... Bombing configuration. Configuration, bombing configuration, your boundaries are restricted. Like what uh, Dr. Devdar brought out that you know you can do an 8G maneuver and things that, or eight times the uh, you know weight of the uh, uh, aircraft itself. But the moment that the air-to-ground configuration is actually or the bomb is released, typically what would happen is that if you have a pure bomber or a pure uh, air-to-air -air, uh, aircraft, you would actually come back reconfigure the aircraft. Whereas right. after the air-to-ground bomb is actually released, air-to-ground bomb is actually dropped automatically the uh, configuration of the aircraft changes to an air-to-air -air role right. and then it permits you higher maneuverability. So basically, basically, if it goes into hostile territory for an attack mission, uh, immediately it's prepared for self-defense. Self-defense. Right. An air defense uh, kind of but, a thing. But that's available, I'm sure, in other aircraft also, other comparable aircraft. Uh, in the latest aircraft, yes, that is available and LCA is contemporary in that sense. But some of the earlier aircrafts, which even our Air Force has, pilot has to manually change over. Right. right. Looking at the configuration and do this switch over manually. Right. Here it's all automatic. So, uh, where do you benchmark Tejas? And when, then we look at the future. Where do you benchmark Tejas now, uh, globally, in terms of what's available? I think as far as technologies, we are at the forefront, meaning there is no aircraft which has more technologies and we are continuously adapting. So this is a contemporary aircraft in terms of avionics, in terms of flight controls. It is uh, at the state of the art right now. At the cutting edge. At the cutting edge. Of course, bigger aircraft can do bigger things and so that you can't compare a bigger aircraft with a smaller aircraft in that way. But in terms of technologies and capabilities, it is at the cutting edge. But did we have to develop all these on our own because all these are available off the shelf also? They are not available. The critical technologies are not available off the shelf. Nobody is ready to share these technologies. So we had to develop these on our own. For example, flyover has been done completely within the country. The control laws, the but hardware. You know, the Mirage 2000 is fly-by-wire. The new Rafale will have fly-by-wire. Yes, uh, but they won't share these technologies with you. They won't share the know-how. But, see, I'm asking uh, deliberately this. Why do you need the know-how when you can buy it? They won't sell sometimes. They may not even okay. be willing there to sell it. There is a small there. problem. Suppose you buy a technology. Now, suppose you want to put a new store or a new weapon. You have to again go back to that person to tell what to do. How do I change this to make it work? Right. Here, we don't have to do that. We can put any stores because we know exactly how the thing works. Again, one buzzword one hears all the time is composites. I know that Indian Air Force loves the Delta shape going back to 1964 and MiG-21 and then Mirages. How do composites work and why do you need them on a new fighter So plane? this uh, basically what happens is that uh, one is water composites. Composites are uh, uh, something that you use in simple terms uh, something like your resin 
plastics right and uh, in, if you want to do it in layman terms you use that particular thing where uh, we can uh, have a layer of resin and plastics with uh, bonding together and then you press them together and then heat that is the thing as a composite structure there are different types of composites that are there and why do you need composites and not just a strong metal titanium no one is weight Weight. weight, you know, you can actually get a something. There is something called a strength to weight ratio. Right. That means you get higher strength with lower weight. That's what you look for. So metals typically would uh, have a uh, you know lower uh, strength weight ratio. Here, what happens is by using composites, you are able to save weight on that number one. Number two is that by using carbon composites, you are able to also give a certain amount of stealth to the aircraft. And one of the highest composites usage. In the in the, probably the world round is in this aircraft. The 90% of the surface area of this aircraft is uh, using composites. Almost 45% by weight of this aircraft is composites. Uh, that's a very significant percentage uh, that we have used, and that's another cutting edge technology that we have uh, basically brought into this aircraft.